Welcome in, guys, to Rover Sports. Hope you enjoyed the intro today. Very fitting that Dave Gettleman is on the cover today of this edition of the show because today, Dave Gettleman and this man to my left, Mike Shula, are hired to, you know, pretty much be the New York Giants. And Dave Gettleman, as a general manager, he is a guy that is using his powers, and he has now acquired a former Alabama head football coach and an offensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers and Mike Shula. Mike Shula is now going to be helping out Pat Shermer with calling plays, even though Pat Shermer, to tell you the truth, was going to be – was he basically said that he'd be calling plays all along. So Mike Shula now, a guy that was run out from Carolina – is now on the staff for the New York Giants, and he has now been appointed as the new offensive coordinator for the New York football Giants. I don't like this move one bit. I don't. I want to be on record in saying I don't like this move at all. You know that there's trouble in paradise when the Carolina Panther fans all across social media are laughing at you for this hire. Mike Shula had the 2015 season where they went 15-1 and with Cam Newton. Other than that, Cam Newton has been very sporadic. Carolina Panthers fans celebrated when Mike Shula left that building. Mike Shula also only won three games over 500 at Alabama before Nick Saban came when he replaced Mike Price in 2003. Mike Shula has... He basically has been uh, I, I don't know how to th- how, I don't know how to phrase this, but he has really advanced himself due to nepotism and because his dad was Don Shula. So he's benefited greatly from that. But you look at Mike Shula now coming in to the New York Giants and what it tells us a lot. It tells us that Mike, it tells us that Pat Shermer doesn't have any power within the organization. Because Pat Shermer's never met Mike Shula before, never worked with Mike Shula before. And Pat Shermer, you want congruency and you want consistency in your coaching staff. And for Mike Shula, a guy with a big head, a big ego, that has called plays before to just come to New York like this, it is not going to work out well because he is going to argue with Pat Shermer. They're going to butt heads all the time. Mike Shula is going to try to get his influence in the in the offense in the playbook and you know that Mike Shula is going to start out by being quiet by saying he's a team guy that Shermer's running the show but you know behind closed doors that these two Gettleman and and uh, Mike Shula are going to team up and basically be constantly nagging at Pat Shermer the entire time like little gnats just twickling in his ear and it is just terrible Pat Shermer Nice Midwestern guy, quiet. He's just getting railroaded right now by Dave Gettleman. Dave Gettleman's like, sit in the back seat, shut the F up, and I'm running the goddamn show. And you guys better shut up. I'm going to duct tape your mouth to the back seat of the car, Pat. You're in it for the ride. I'm running the show. This is my gig. Shut up and just coach football. I'm I'm making player decisions. Me and Mike are going to be controlling this thing. And this is a power move by Dave Gettleman right at Pat Shermer that, listen, Pat, I don't give a shit that you've never spoken to Mike Shula before, but he's going to be the guy that's going to be your assistant, and you shut up. I mean, I wanted Pat Shermer to hire his guy. I want Shermer to hire some young kid from the Vikings, from the Eagles, somewhere he's worked in the past. Someone that Shermer trusts. It's Shermer's gig. He's the guy that's the head football coach. There's supposed to be a separation between church and state. You know how we talk about in the United States government how there's a separation between church and state? Well, here, Dave Gettleman is pretty much impeding on Pat Shermer's ground, and Pat's too weak to say, back the fuck off, I'm running this show too. It's ridiculous. It's a shitty hire. We now have one of the more dysfunctional front offices and coaching staffs in pro football, and John Mara doesn't know what he's doing anymore. 
frankly, with the Ben McAdoo, with the benching, it's bullshit what's really transpired with this organization. But you know what? Ben McAdoo was so shitty enough. Ben McAdoo's like dating a two or a one. Some hideous creature. And then when you see a five or a six, like Pat Shermer, you're like, okay, let's go with this for a bit. Let's go for this. Let's, let's, let, you know what? I'm going to quit complaining. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the one to blame for dating a one or a two. Maybe it's my fault, you know? Maybe it's me. Maybe we're not this great franchise. So Pat Shermer, eh, decent hire, you know, maybe make the playoffs a little bit. Solid guy, nice guy. I'm like, okay, I can ride with this. We just had Ben freaking McAdoo. I can totally ride with this. James Betcher, James Betcher is a hell of a dude. Bruce Arians likes him. Players like him. He's young. Hell yeah, let's give him a shot. Sure, I'm totally down with the James Betcher move. But this guy, Mike Shula, I'm going to interview Pigskin Pete tomorrow. He's a Carolina Panthers expert, so he's going to you know, continue to give me some information. He's going to give us some info on what this guy is like. What, from a temper standpoint, what types of plays he likes to call, I need to know about Mike Shula. I don't watch the Panthers every single second of my life, but I know some people that do, and the people that are Panthers fans say this guy fucking sucks, and, and they're laughing at us. If you look on social media today, it's about 90% negative, and that's very, very, very concerning. Then you look at his track record as a head coach. I believe he had a pretty good athletic director, too, at Alabama. The name escapes me, but he had a good system at Alabama. Listen, Mike Price was there. There was a lull after Bear Bryant. I'm, I'm fully aware that there was a lull, and it's not just Bear to Nick. It's not just Alabama's been great all the time. Like They had their years where they they were down, and Mike Shula with John Parker Wilson and Brady Croyle, Brody Croyle, that's when Alabama was very average, actually. They were actually a team that would win six games with Mike Shula as a head coach. So I'm, I'm not liking this move at all. Frankly, I don't like it. Dave Gettleman's, you know, he's busting out right now, and he's just he's just taking he's running the franchise like a feudal lord right now. And we better just hold on tight and see where this thing freaking goes. And uh, w- with that, I will answer your questions. Okay, let me log on right now. Let me see. With that, with that. I will answer your questions. <sighs> yep, Jabari, you're right. Jed York is is a decent is a very good example of uh, exactly right. Let the guys run the show. Now listen, um, Dave Gettleman's not the owner of the Giants, but you got to have a collaborative effort. You're completely right. Look at Kyle and John. Look at Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. Look at look at look at Sean McVay and Les Snead. Uh, look at you know Peyton and um, and Mickey. But uh, I'm trying to think who else. There's another good example like John Robinson and and Mike Vrabel. So uh, so absolutely. Um, <laughs> I appreciate the comments on the music as well, and you're absolutely right. You definitely need to have a general manager and a coach that get along. I mean, look at all the successful ones, Howie and Doug. I know Bill Belichick, he is just, he's the outlier, but then you have Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer, and coaching's even more important sometimes than a general manager, because Rick Spielman's the same dude you know, he was kind of a doofus a couple of years ago. He made one of the worst trades that I've seen in quite a while. He traded his number one pick in the draft for a quarterback that literally has his arm attached to a sling in Sam Bradford. That literally can't throw five yards since maybe the year, you know, 1998 when he was at Oklahoma or whenever the hell he was at Oklahoma throwing swing passes against Big 12 cupcakes. So he traded Derek Barnett for Sam freaking Bradford. You know, that's how dumb Rick Spielman was in that move. But Mike Zimmer, you know, still panned out, okay? You know, Dimitrov and Quinn like each other. Marone and Tom Coughlin are based Marone's like Coughlin's son. You need to have great, you know, congruency amongst your staff. These guys got to like each other, got to know each other. I'm on board saying that this hire is going to suck, that Mike Shula could be a cancer that could just run through the organization like crazy. But you know what, Giants fans? Listen, 
We're the consumers of the product. We're going to work our ass off so that someday we'll have control over this team. One day we'll have uh, control over the show. But for now, we don't, and we have to sit back and watch and see what happens with this new regime. I will say this. James Betcher and Pat Shermer, light years better than Ben McAdoo. And I am going to give it a chance. But this hire today, right now, from my initial gut reaction, when I first saw the news was, oh, no, this guy has a terrible reputation. Everybody around town doesn't like this guy. Everybody in the circle, everybody in the fraternity of the NFL is like, ugh, nepotism, not very much success, bad offenses, uh, doesn't develop offensive linemen, very poor play calling. Cam Newton regressed a lot of the time and talked to Carolina Panther fans. And I'm excited to get Pigskin Pete on tomorrow. But gut reaction is, ugh. You know, I would have rather hired a guy like the Colts did. They hired this wide receiver coach that's like 32 years old that hasn't done jack shit in his career. But he's a guy that was a quarterback's coach, a running back's coach. So he has done a little bit. But Frank Reich knows him, and he's Frank Reich's guy. And Chris Ballard's like, fine, take this Italian guy, Nick Savarini, or whatever his name is, and do it. The Eagles promote this guy named Press... Uh, fields or press. I don't even know who even names their son press, but he got elevated. So you got to have guys that your coaches like and feel comfortable with. And Pat Shermer's never met this guy. This guy probably has a big ego. His dad's Don Shula. And this is a guy that was a college head coach at one of the premier programs and an offensive coordinator. You really think he's just going to go gently into that good night and let Pat run the show? You know, I just don't know. Exactly. And Mr. Universe is even calling out right now. They ran Newton into the ground. He's saying that Cam Newton. Exactly. Bring somebody from the Vikings. You know what I mean? So, uh, so Tevin, I'd love nothing more, my friend, than to see Giants play Giants football, to see us run the football. Absolutely, man. I want to see it. I really do. So, uh, Shermer is going to call his own plays. But uh, this is not a good hire, man. I'm the, I'm, you know, I'm just as big of a Giants fan as you, probably Tevin. And um, you know, I don't, I don't really like the move. But listen, I, I hope I'm dead wrong, and I hope Shula is fine and contributes and lets Pat run the show. I want Shermer and James to have a lot of control. I'm not, I'm not even disagreeing with the Dave Gettleman move. It's just that Gettleman right now really made a power move today that was really appalling. Um, promoting his guy and not really communicating with Pat. I want a collaborative effort. I don't want anybody getting shoved in corners or shoved in lockers. Chip Kelly and Howie Roseman didn't work for that reason. Chip Kelly and uh, you know uh, the the guy in uh, San Fran didn't work. So you got to have a head coach and you got to have these guys work together basically. And Mike Shula just hasn't really been very successful. Anyway, other news. Um, what I was going to say is, uh, yeah, yeah, Reuben Foster. Um, listen, if you're going to suspend him for the whole year, though, I mean, then you're still going to have him around. You still might have that constant headache around. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we're still picking out facts um, about what Ruben's going on. But why the heck is Ruben hanging out with a crazy girl anyway? And I could say even worse tone of language. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, Yes, I will look that up, Tevin. Like I really do want, uh, I really do want uh, him to be a run first coordinator. Uh, what would Ruben get to you? Maybe a third round pick. Uh, listen, I like Ruben just as much as the next guy. I think that people in that locker room love Savage Foster. I think after wins, you look in the locker room and Savage Foster doesn't act like a rookie amongst those kids. So, uh, <laughs> oh my God, no one would want that fate on anybody to be traded to the Brownies. But if you get back a third or a fourth, you know, probably do it. Um, I think that John Lynch is a caring guy, so we're obviously going to still care about Ruben and his development. And listen, if Ruben goes out and has a great career, like you could find another linebacker that's going to be pretty successful. Like it's not like he's going to. It's not like we're going to be awake at night thinking about Ruben Savage Foster. You know, at least I'm not going to be laying awake at night just thinking about Ruben. Like Jimmy's different, Marquise is different. I think. Um, 
And, uh, and yeah, second pick overall, Saquon, I agree, time to run the football, or you get a, uh, or you get Quentin Nelson, big Quentin Nelson is a Giants fan growing up, so he'd bring back that toughness that I completely agree with, so either Saquon, uh, we have to see how Saquon runs in the combine, I have to say, this is a hell of a running back draft. Um, hell of a running back draft. So I wouldn't even be opposed to trading back, getting a great offensive lineman. I really want Nate Soldier from the Patriots in free agency as well. The line and the running backs need to be addressed, and I don't want any part of a quarterback either because we haven't fully seen what Davis is capable of. And listen, if you're at pick number 15 or whatever in, in, in future years, I've been saying this for a long time, everybody wants to talk about about the fact that the New York Giants are picking at number two and this is so rare and this is rare air that we're breathing and we have to land a quarterback right now point is is that in three years if Davis Webb sucks you're going to go four and you're going to go three and 13 anyway and you'll be right back and you'll probably end up getting Tua or Justin Fields anyway in like three years you'll get Tua Taglovailoa and then if Davis Webb turns into Curtis Painter so be it so be it. Then you will tank at that time. But right now it's Eli, if it's Olivier Vernon, it's Jack Rabbit Jenkins, it's Landon Collins. Another thing I was thinking about was um, was also you could pair Minka and Landon together in the secondary, two Alabama guys that are really, really tight and good friends. Um. I think that that listen if the Browns get Saquon too like then the Colts and the Giants can trade their ammunition back but I completely agree Jabari like if they want if they want Saquon like I think the Colts really might take Saquon Barkley or the Giants so um so listen I, I listen that is that is a positive Adam like that that we're going to be running the football again I will say that uh, <laughs> will the Giants trade Eli? I'm not sure where you're going to get for him, and probably not at this stage. Eli Apple is annoying. I completely agree. If you're not, Landon Collins is the leader of this team, and Landon is a high character guy. And if he's bitching about uh, Land uh, about Eli Apple, I'm worried about Eli too. I liked seeing Janoris play that position better. Eli has been given preferential treatment because of his draft slot. Odell Beckham Jr. Another guy that you could get quite a haul back for, but Giants fans don't want to quit on him yet. And let's just see how he reacts to new coaching. We will learn everything we need to know in the next 12 months. Great presser today from Frank Reich. I want to give a shout out to the Colts fans. I really think the Colts are doing an excellent, excellent job. The Colts, Titans, Jaguars, and Texans are all building very nicely and doing terrific, terrific job. So, yeah, Eli Apple is not well-liked whatsoever at all. So tomorrow, going to get Pigskin on, going to get my guy Jet, uh, Jet Central on. You guys were awesome. I'm going to cut it right here. Nice 20-minute podcast for everybody hanging out. I can't wait till free agency. And you guys are sweet. Thanks a lot for joining in and chilling with us on Rover Sports.